Okay, I'd li now I'd like to do a demonstration in MATLAB of this Newton Raftson business. Let's take a look at a shop crane. This is in Appendix C of the appendices document that you have access to on the website. So for this shop crane, uh, there's an actuator R2 which you would lengthen. The actuator would rotate and its angle theta 2 would change. R1, a fixed vector, plus R3 along the boom equals R2. So once you change R2, you need to solve for unknown theta 2 and theta 3. So let's look at what that is in uh, newton raphson So the two position equations, I said R1 plus R3 equals R2. If I write each of those position vectors the way we're going to write all our position vectors, R1 cos theta 1 i, R1 sine theta 1 j, and so on, and I bring everything to one side of the equation, my two functions, my two nonlinear equations that I want to solve are functions of the unknowns theta 2 and theta 3. And I can work out <laughs> values of my parameters. R1 is 3.162 meters. Theta 1 is a fixed 1.249 radians. The boom R3 is 2 meters long, at least the part of the boom that's in the vector loop. I want to solve for theta 2 and theta 3 for every value of R2. So here's my vector of unknown thetas, theta 2 and theta 3. newton raphson requires that I approximate these functions as linear. So I need the slopes of the two functions with respect to theta 2 and theta 3. And I need to evaluate those slopes at some initial guess, theta 2 bar and theta 3 bar. So the, the matrix of slopes is the Jacobian. So I want to take the partial of the first function with respect to the first unknown theta 2. So the partial of this term with respect to theta 2, I'm going to get minus r2 times minus sine theta 2. So I get positive r2 sine theta 2 evaluated at theta 2 bar, which is my guess. Similarly, the partial of f1 with respect to the other unknown theta 3 is going to give me minus r3 sine theta 3 bar and here is the uh, here are the two slopes for the other function the partial of f2 with respect to theta 2 and theta 3 so there's my Jacobian matrix I make an initial guess maybe I do a scale rough scale drawing of the mechanism just to guess what the two initial angles might be let's say I want those as 120 and 200 degrees I'll put them in radians 2.09 and 3.49. And now the algorithm in the notes says that the corrections in delta, the corrections delta theta 2 and delta theta 3, that give me a solution to the linear approximations, that comes from the inverse of the Jacobian matrix multiplied by the negative of the residuals, which are simply the two functions evaluated at my guess. So I plug theta 2 bar and theta 3 bar in here. I'll get something non-zero, that's my residual. So I need to code this in MATLAB. Now the page after this in the appendix works through some hand calculations to find those corrections for the first step. What do we do in MATLAB? Alright, so this is an M file that's going to call a newton raphson function. What it's going to do is, first it's going to say, let's do 100 points. Let's set our parameters R1 and R3 to whatever constant values they are. Let's vary the actuator length R2 from 2 to 4 meters in 100 equally spaced increments. Now, I'm going to set my initial guess. Uh, these comments are not quite right. So theta 2 bar and theta 3 bar are 120 and 200 degrees respectively. Now I'm going to put, my, put this inside a loop for i equals 1 to 100. Theta 2 and theta 3, my new, my actual values of theta 2 and theta 3, I'm going to call a function called crane pause func nr single, which is crane position function newton raphson single iteration. Uh, 
I am going to call this function and I am going to send to that function the following. Theta 1, I'm going to send theta 2 bar, which is my current guess for theta 2. I'm going to send theta 3 bar and I'm going to send parameter r1. I'm going to send the current actuator length and I'm going to send the constant boom length. So all these go to the function. The function is going to do newton raphson It's going to converge on the value of theta 2 and theta 3 for that actuator length. And then it's going to turn it into degrees and it's going to write it to an array. And then for the next actuator length I'm going to guess that I'm going to use my current value of theta 2 and theta 3 as the guess for theta 2 and theta 3 when the actuator has gotten a little bit longer. You know, this is a fairly smooth motion we're expecting here. So the next values of the angle should be fairly close to the current values of the angle because the actuator length is changing in a fairly moderate way. So then after I have theta 2 and theta 3 I plot them. Now what does this function look like? So I'll go to the function m file. Functions in MATLAB can be a little tricky until you get the hang of them. I start off by saying function theta 2 and theta 3 those are the things I want to return to the other file equals crane pause func nr single of the variables that I'm sending to this function. So this is the syntax. I need to have the function name and all those inputs the same as I did in the other M file. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to set a criterion for convergence. I'm going to say that if my residuals, you know, if the actual values of the functions are within 0 0.000001 of the solution, then I'm going to stop. Um, this, these two lines of code here, they calculate the actual function values using theta 2 bar and theta 3 bar. If my guesses are right, then f will be 0 and 0. I'll get 0 for both functions. Now, while norm of f is greater than epsilon, that means, norm of f means kind of like the vector magnitude of the two function residuals. So if the first function value was 1 and the second function value was 2, I'd get like root 3 for that norm. So as long as the magnitude of the residuals is greater than my small epsilon, I'm going to keep doing newton raphs and iterations. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate my Jacobian, which is a function of theta 2 bar and theta 3 bar. Delta theta is inverse of the Jacobian matrix multiplied by minus residuals. My, I'm going to set my new step 2 guess equal to my step 1 guess plus the delta theta that I just calculated. I'm going to set my new value of theta 3 to my guess plus the correction that I got from that equation. Okay, so I started off with a guess theta 2 bar, theta 3 bar. I approximated the two functions as lines. I got an intersection point. I got a new value of theta 2 and theta 3. I'm going to use that as my guess for step 2. I'm going to check in on those functions. How are those residuals doing, guys? Oh, I'm going to find the norm of those residuals. And if it's still greater than epsilon, I'm going to go again. I'm going to find my new Jacobian. I'm going to find an, the next correction delta theta. I'm going to find the next value of theta 2 and theta 3. And maybe by now the norm of f is less than epsilon. In that case I'm going to stop. Then I'm going to send back to the other m file. I'm going to say, okay, at this actuator length, here's the value of theta 2 you need. It's my most recent guess, which when I plug it into the functions basically solves them. So I end the function with theta 2 equals and theta 3 equals because this function is supposed to take in stuff from the other m file including the current 
actuator length, and it is supposed to give back theta 2 and theta 3. So that's why the function ends with theta 2 equals and theta 3 equals. So if you run those two M files, uh, the one you run is you run crane pos nr, and uh, if you type that into the command line, it'll call the function as often as it needs to, and it will plot theta 2 and theta 3 for that shop crane. So play around with that and uh, good luck.